Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to be talking about Niagara parameters in Unreal 4. If you're wondering about this initial setup, it's a emitter that's based on the upward mesh burst. But that's not really important for what we're talking about in this video. So there's actually quite a few layers to parameters. We'll go a little in depth on some of the topics, some of the other ones we're going to save for later. So first things first, if you don't have this parameters window open, you want to go up to Windows, and then you want to click on Parameters and then you'll get this parameters window. And if you wanna see everything that's offered in here, you can click on this eyedropper with this dropdown, and you can click on show advanced categories. Now, pretty much all the parameters that are in here, they're all given to you from Epic Games. And the parameters that are already preset, or they're being set behind the scenes when your particle is going through the different stages of emitter spawn, emitter update, etc. Now you may click on some modules and you may have noticed some of these parameters, and you may not have really realized what they're doing. So for example, whenever you're using a curve, you'll see that it says curve index. And typically you'll see particles normalized age. And because of this particles normalized age, this is where your curves are usually a percentage based on time from zero to one, but they're a percentage based on the lifetime. That's what the normalized age is doing. Now, a few things you should notice in the parameters window is next to these parameters, you'll see a locked icon. And it typically means that you can't really edit these or change them. And then next to that, you'll see a number. And what this is saying is that it's referenced that many times somewhere in your emitter or emitters. Now, additionally, any of these parameters that have a locked icon, you can't delete them. You just can't. And also each one of these parameters, they all have what is known as a namespace before them. So obviously these all say system and they're on the system attribute. So if you right click, you'll see that there's an option for change namespace or change namespace modifier. You can't change them because they're set. They are what they are and the engine doesn't allow you to change these ones because they don't want you to mess things up. But within each one of these categories, you can click on this plus icon and it gives you a whole bunch of different options to make different variable types. So next to the namespace of each one of these parameters, you'll see these other little icons. And if you hover over them, they'll tell you what kind of variable it is. You know, so red is bull, green is float, teal is an integer, and so on and so on. But so we can click on this plus icon and we can make whatever kind of variable type that we want. So for example, we can create a float and then we can give it a name. And when we make that, you'll see that it's not referenced anywhere. Additionally, if you right click on this and you go to the change namespace, you can move it to wherever you want. Maybe you don't want it in system. Maybe you want this to be an emitter variable or a particle variable. And when you do that, it'll move right away. So like I said before, this has zero references. So the question becomes, how do we edit this variable? Like, how do we use it? What do we do? So depending on the kind that you just made, you're gonna to wanna to go to that category or those categories, and you're gonna to wanna to click on the plus icon. And if you just scroll all the way down, you'll see set new or existing parameter directly. And in here, if we click on this plus icon again, you get the option to create a new parameter or set a specific parameter. So we're gonna choose set. You can see that since we're in particles, it's only gonna show us the particle variables. So we can scroll down until we see my very special float and now you can set this. Now with this module, if we just click on the plus icon, of course we can just go to create new parameter. And we kind of get the same kind of window that we saw before in the parameters window. So we'll just search for integer. We'll give it a number, something like five. And if you right click on this and you click rename, you can rename it. Now you could also just keep adding variables through this module, but you don't have to keep it in this module. You can make another one of those sets just so they're separate, different ways to do it. They both work. Now, so for example, we have these variables set in particle spawn, but if you want to use them, all you need to do is go to a variable dropdown. And instead of dynamic inputs, we want to look for link inputs. And what you notice is with link inputs, it's only going to show you parameters or variable types that are available for this module and for that variable that you're working with. So the ones that we're looking for are in particles, 
So I'm going to choose my very special float. And now we're linked to that parameter that we created. Additionally, you can just go to the parameters window and you just drag and drop that. And before you drop it, you can actually see all of the different places that you can place that parameter. So once again, as an example, we're going to go to the parameters window in the emitter attributes and we're going to add an integer and we'll just call this spawn amount and we're going to go to emitter spawn. I'm going to click on the plus icon. We're going to choose set new or existing parameter directly. And in here, we're just going to drag that spawn amount into set parameters. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to make it a dynamic input and do add integer. We'll start with 10. And then in B, we're going to click on that drop down again. We're going to look for that uniform range in. We'll just put 20 in the minimum and we'll put 80 in the maximum. Now in spawn burst instantaneous, we're going to click on that and we're going to revert the spawn count here. And now we're going to drag our spawn amount into the spawn count. We'll let that compile. So overall setting your own parameters just gives you a lot of flexibility. And all of the engine side parameters, there's a lot of other topics we're going to talk about where these will make more sense, but you won't know what they all do until you run into it. And if you are curious what they do, just keep going through the modules and find out where they live. See what they're attached to? Just hover over them and try and read the comments. Alright guys, this covers Niagara parameters. If you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.